Woof, 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 woof. Sub, woof, sub, woof. Yes, this is a subwoofer repair video. Um, got an old Kenwood sub that I've had kicking around here for probably about five years. I think it's time I got off my ass and checked it out and see what's wrong with it so I can sell it. This time I got a Kenwood subwoofer. This one was given to me. Uh, I've got chomping at the bit wants to buy it off me. So uh, I told him I'd have a look at it and see if it's working. Uh, don't know anything about it. It was given to me years ago. It's been sitting here for a few years and say someone I was working on, well, the guy that did the fix that remote control for, he saw it sitting here in the shop and he's, I don't want to buy that sub from you. So we're going to check it out and see whether it needs any work done on it. I think it works and it does. Just the controls, I think, are dirty. So, let's take this apart and clean the controls. And you guys can have a look inside it while we're at it. So I don't know what type of amplifier this one's got in it. Whether it's a whether it's a Class H or a Class D. It's probably a Class H. Sometimes called a bash amp. But I don't know. We'll find out pretty quick once I get all the screws out. This is going to be a pretty quick one because I think I just need to clean the control, but we'll take a look at it. It's 100, it's rated 160 watts, this one. Or it draws 160 watts. It's a Kenwood SW303. So all the screws out. Uh, the Oh, one more to go. I always miss that one last elusive screw, right? The entire back should pop off. Usually they're on pretty tight. There we go. Alright, what do we got here? We got an amplifier board and a, uh, a separate speaker. So let's just undo the speaker plug. Three wires going to the speaker is interesting. How often do you see three wires going to the speaker? But there's the, uh, the power amp. Good old class, well it's class B for sure, it might be class H, I think this is just a class B, A, B, class B, same thing, the only difference is uh, the bias on it, but two great big transistors, what are they on this one, never a flashlight around when you want one, even though I know that there's one right here because I'm just using one. This is a 2SD. It's a 50. Can't see it. Can't see the number off it. It's kind of really faint. Can you guys read the numbers? At least can I see them on camera? 2SA something. Can we get the light in there better, maybe. Looks like a Toshiba 2SA 1943 for the PNP and the NPNP. 5, 5, 52 something, 520. Oh, that's really hard to 5206 maybe? Anyway, it's a, um, might be a Class H amplifier. Some of these ones were. Class H, you have uh, two power rails. And it switches rails. Looking at the number of uh, of wires here from the transformer, it probably is a class H. What's the voltage on these caps? 63 volts, so probably 120, 120 volts um, between them. No, this would be a class A B, I think, because usually the class H have uh, two sets of caps, right? They have one set of caps for the lower voltage and another set of caps for the higher voltage. I mean, it's got these ones here, but they're likely just the, for the preamp section. So this one would just be a, a class AB or a class B. You know, 
the difference being is well class a b is is a class b amplifier it's just biased differently so it all depends on how, how heavy the bias is um, distortion usually isn't an issue on subwoofers nobody really even measures it but um, anyway uh, all that's wrong with this one that I can see is the controls need to be clean so let's get in there with some cleaner and get this one together one thing I don't get on this is why the, um, the speaker has three wires that doesn't make a lot of sense right unless they, unless they're grounding I guess they could be grounding the actual frame not necessary but the controls make this thing sound good sound good it's a subwoofer piece of equipment I took out of my system my home home theater system years ago was a subwoofer because all I got was complaints from the other people watching turn it down it's too loud it's too boomy and my um, my polks have pretty good sound themselves they have subs built in so my main speakers have I think there's four drivers and then two big 12 inch side firing subs in them so they they have pretty darn good sound to begin with they should for what they cost I forget the model of the speakers but they weren't cheap I think I paid about five thousand bucks for them when I bought them and I bought them probably 30 years ago almost. Polk. They were, I guess, some of the last of the Polks before they moved their operations over to China with American made ones. Anyway, I paid a lot of money for the most expensive speakers I've ever bought, and it was around five grand. But I tell you, they sound nice. They sound real nice. And that's why I spent the kind of money I spent on them, even though back then I probably couldn't have afforded it. I can guarantee you I couldn't afford it because I was just building a house at the time. So um, I bought them just after... Uh... No, I, I guess I bought them before. I had them when I built, rebuilt the house. I had them before. Just before. Because I, I rebuilt the place 20 years ago. And I had those speakers before I... Um, before I rebuild. Throw these screws back in and we'll see how this thing sounds. Alright, we'll just plug it in. And turn it on. That distortion that you hear is not the speaker. That's actually... It's rattling the microphone and the camera. It sounds a lot worse on the mic than it does when you're listening to it. And because the frequencies are so low, they're, just, they're below what the mic is capable of working with. Okay, I guess it works. What you can expect, it's a subwoofer. It does what subwoofers do, make noise. Anyway, uh, yeah, I guess it was an okay find. It was just given to me and said, here, take it don't know if it works you can have it so there it is it's fixed thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one bye